Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Theological Leftovers. We are continuing our Defenders series, and I promised you we'd look at three stories from the book of Genesis, starting with Genesis 13. I think we're going to take one of these each day. Otherwise, the videos are getting longer than I wanted them to get. So if you want to look it up, it's Genesis chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 2 and read through verse um, 12. All right. Genesis 13, verse 2. Now, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and I, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. This is our text. Hey, so does this sound like a text that involves defending I think it is. First of all, you see strife. It's not between Lot and Abram necessarily, but between um, the people that work for them because the quarters are getting too close. Both people are being so blessed. They have so many cattle that they they can't survive in the same spot. So um, so there's some fighting that's going on. Abram takes the initiative. And, and I would point out, uh, actually, the first action of Abram um, may be overlooked and not seem like that big a deal, but it says in verse the end of verse 4, and there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. So we see Abram is active in prayer, and it's right after he prays to the Lord that he goes to Lot, and and they have this conversation where they, they deal with this, this strife between their workers. And it's really Abram that deals with it, right? Um, Abram makes a sacrifice in in order that that um, for the sake of Lot, for the sake of his neighbor, for the sake of the well being of his neighbor and his workers and everything else. This is this is right in keeping with the Ten Commandments. Even though officially the Ten Commandments haven't been given, we see them being uh, being kept very well here by Abram, who understands that God has made a promise to him who understands that God is going to bless him wherever he is, that, that he doesn't have to fight to hold on to stuff. He's willing to sacrifice. And I would contend that this, this is important before we look at any of these other examples of Abram defending Lot, that, that this is fundamental. First of all, we see Abram in prayer. Second of all, we see Abram living according to the promises of God, not afraid to, that like he has to hold on to grab hold on uh, hold of uh, whatever is is best in front of him um, or he'll lose everything uh, but he understands that God will fulfill his promises so he can be generous and he is generous to lot he even sacrifices and again I would contend that that this is key this is fundamental when it comes to us being good godly defenders we have to have a willingness to sacrifice for the for our neighbor, for the person we're trying to defend. A sacrificial heart that understands we don't have to be afraid of losing anything. Because whatever matters, 
um, God will, will store up for us and keep for us or restore to us. We can be generous and we can give. There are a lot of things, uh, if, for example, when we think about defending our neighbor, the first thing that pops into our head is, is, is physically defending them or, or verbally defending them. And, and I would contend the first thing, if we're going to be good defenders for our neighbor, for our loved ones, the first thing that we have to defend them against is our own heart. Because we are prone to make decisions that are very self-centered and not focused on what is best for our neighbor. And so if we are going to be good defenders, the first thing we have to deal with is our own heart. And the way that we deal with our own heart is we recognize that self-centeredness, we repent of it, and we give thanks that we have a God that forgives us and who is in no way self-centered, but has given us everything, even his own son to die for our sins. Even the whole kingdom of heaven, God has chosen to give us, not because we deserve it, but because he loves us and because he has promised these things to us. And so that's how we deal with our own self-centeredness. We recognize we have a father in heaven who has, in his mercy and according to his promises, promises given us all things. Um, so we can be generous. We can, we can, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we can, we can, I don't want to say this, we can let go of that self-centeredness and we can love our neighbor. And this is the first step to being a good defender. Next, we're not going to read it, but next we're going to look at Genesis chapter 14. And again, probably Sunday, I won't have time to do that. So Monday, we'll be looking at Genesis 14. If you want to do a sneak peek ahead and take a look. Um, in fact, if you look at it, um, you got a day and a half, almost two days to look at it and throw me a couple of questions. Um, if there's a couple of particular things that you would like to address, let me know. And I'll be happy to do that. But you got to let me know. All right. God bless you all. Remember um, that we have Bible class at nine o'clock on Sundays. We're about halfway through the book of Revelation. Um, but we just came to the end of one cycle and we're kind of restarting. So you're not going to be um, you're not going to be lost if you join us. We'd love to have you. And then 1030 is the divine service. And you if you, well, whether or not you're in Evansville, if you want to make the drive, you are welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. God bless you all. God bless the end of your week.